Here we go then, it'll be Neil Rennick to get us started for uh, for Hoyk. So Hoyk playing away from the uh, the club room end in this first half. Remember, ten minutes each way in this half and it is, uh, it's Cammy Rudkin that's going to referee us. Blows his whistle, gets us started. Nice high hanging kick again, not taken there though by the Hoyt chasers. Graham Dodds picks up that one, throws it behind his back and uh, fortunately for him, scooped up by a Melrose player. So it's Melrose back in their 22. Fraser Thompson just on this uh, right hand side of the pitch. No joy for him up there up against Rennick. So sends it away back in Melrose. Well caught right underneath their own post and in pile. Hoyk there to try and get hands on that but Melrose secure at the breakdown there. Right, it goes away to the right hand side now to, uh, to uh, Dodds there through the hands and it's just uh, booted in fact by Dodds. Not a bad option because nobody at the back there for uh, for Hoyk. It's Cottrell that's got to go all the way back to his 22 to pick this one up and Graham Dodds was the chaser there, the man that kicked it. So given off there to, uh, to Rennick. Throws a dummy, tries to straighten up and uh, quickly the door closed on him but uh, offloads there to Hutton and as he's done all day he just glides away there and uh, up the middle of the pitch past the last man if he can find support it will be a score for Hoyk but it uh, doesn't go to hand don't think it, well, it was a knock on there by Hoyk and uh, first chance to Hoyk it should have been converted but it wasn't it's still Hoyk nil Melrose nil yeah just unfortunately there Graham Dodds John Dial passing the ball out to him on that far side of the field deep inside his own 22 Graham Dodds wasn't wanting the, the lung burst and run up that far side of the field correct option for him the long kick down the field Greg Cottrell chasing back feeds it to Rory Hutton and Rory Hutton absolutely beautiful when he's in this kind of frame of mind uh, you know the way he just glides through defences but unfortunately the final pass just didn't go to hand because Hoyk should have been in there and they should have been ahead minute and a half played in the tie nil nil and it's Melrose with the ball Graham Dodds away at the far end of the pitch again inside his 22 again takes the direct route offloads it Cottrell look to uh, to get in there and, and steal that one but Andrew Skeen pounced on it the ball being knocked on by Melrose and uh, no advantage accruing there so it'll be a put in to the scrum here for uh, for Hoyk. So Hoyk still have the territory way up that far end. Melrose players just a little bit slow to get back to their feet. Once somebody's uh, taken a knock, there. in fact, Cammy Rudkin calls time off calls for the uh, the Melrose physio. But uh, Hoyk for now and for uh, from their point of view in the right area of the pitch. Yeah, that's exactly where they want to be. They want to play all the rugby down there in the Melrose 22. And uh, as long as they can keep them pinned back there, as long as they can keep the ball away from the likes of Fraser Thompson and Andrew Skeen, Andrew Skeen who has scored two or three tries here this afternoon, as long as they can keep the ball away from these guys, Hoyk should get some joy well Gary Johnson there goes back to collect the ball throws a ball out again and well we're uh, being treated to one or two mistakes early another on another forward was, pass uh, yeah it was in fact yes yeah, so we've, uh, we've seen one or two there Michael Robertson was uh, was waiting out on the wing there and I think it was uh, young Gary Johnson that threw the ball out it was a nice long but a uh, little bit too flat for the liking of the referee and back he comes so it's Colvin to put into the scrum here just on halfway back it comes to uh, to Skeen and then away along along the uh, the Melrose back line tackled there by Cottrell well he doesn't make the tackle in fact he was all over McGrath but he didn't actually put him to deck which was the last was what he needed to do and McGrath's away here and if he can find Thompson it should be the first try for Melrose here I think Thompson is going to get in the corner he has to dive to evade the tackle there of Rory Hutton and he gets himself in at the corner so first blood then to Melrose in the final it's Hoyt nil Melrose 5 yeah unfortunately you know Greg Cottrell he doesn't miss many tackles but uh, he missed that one for sure and uh, the ball fed out to Fraser Thompson on this near side here but Rory Hutton did the, the right thing he was tracking back and he did the right thing he pushed Greg Cottrell as far as he uh, sorry pushed uh, Fraser Thompson as far as he possibly could into this corner here so the, the score is uh, right in the corner here on this near side and Andrew Skeen taking a kick from this near side touchline just inside the 22 it's a difficult difficult kick this for Skeen very hard kick for him but he catches it well and he's watching that very closely he's leaning to his left hand side he just wanted it to, uh, to go the other side of the post it was a cracking attempt there but uh, not quite over but Melrose it is with the first try and Fraser Thompson has scored a few for them this afternoon it's Hoyk nil Melrose five yeah no four good. minutes gone first blood to Melrose and uh, Hoyk will want to get themselves back up there because they certainly they were in the ascendancy early doors in this uh, this final and they'll want to get themselves back up there but that's John Diel he's beaten uh, Michael Robertson to the ball there long way to go in this one they've still got uh, six minutes left of this first half and uh, there's Colvin again breaks away from loose Hoyk tackle and a second tackle missed once again by Cottrell eventually Hoyk dragged their man down just under 22 centre field so Melrose options either way and McGrath comes well in fact it was helps again originally comes to uh, to this 
near side that then goes away to the far side and uh, that's Andre Skeen dances as he passed another couple of tackles and he's in for Melrose second try that looks like Cottrell just lying there on the 22 not happy and uh, once again another missed tackle for Hoyk if Hoyk are going to get themselves into this they're going to have to tighten their defence up it's Hoyk nil Melrose 10 they certainly are and I mean it's been a, a, a feature of Hoyk's play this afternoon the fact that they have been defending so well but uh, just uh, this first five minutes of this final the, the defence seems to have uh, gone completely wrong for Hoyk and uh, Andrew Skeen with another opportunity here with the conversion right in front of the sticks and he ain't going to miss that one that sails between the sticks so uh, Hoyk now uh, leading uh, b- behind um, what's only is 12 points to nil yeah Melrose a great start there Andrew Skeen scoring the second try Fraser Thompson go over for the first in the corner just right in front of our commentary position here and uh, Hoyk have got to get themselves the, uh, their hands on the ball. It was a great defensive effort in their uh, semi-final game against Watsonians that got them through while well, their defence has been found wanting in this one and uh, once again John Dale goes up, takes a restart out it comes to Fraser Thompson now, is he going to have another go for the corner and uh, cuts back inside past Hutton there, offloads there and if, uh, if McGrath could have taken that one that was the third try for Melrose but they're still in possession on the Hoyk 22 on this uh, right hand side and back they come, try and play up the narrow channel and uh, Hutton couldn't quite get his hands on that when he went in for the interception I think if he'd taken that he could well have been the length of the field but it was knocked on by the Hoyk man and a chance for a put into a scrum here for uh, Melrose about 15 metres in from this right touchline and once again just outside the Hoyk 22 Hoyk nil Melrose 12 you just wonder there Bruce you know I mean Rory Hutton he was he was like playing juggle ball there and he, you just wonder if uh, if instead he'd just let it drop to his foot and he'd just actually hoofed it up the park that, uh, that he'd have stood uh, more chance there well here we go again it's Melrose looking very very secure in possession and uh, just shifting well having said that John Dale is absolutely furious there that ball just thrown into touch quickly thrown in there by uh, by Hoyk the referee says no line was uh, set let's go back and uh, do it properly guys so it'll be Cottrell to throw into the line out so we're uh, just about on halfway taken in the centre of the line out and off the top there to Cottrell a rather uh, bobbling ball but uh, it stays in Hoyk possession as uh, Johnson there just offloads to Rennick brings it back this way Cottrell involved up the middle tackled by DL offloads just about in time there to Craig Russell just uh, has a little dance left and right now he's straight past Dale didn't lay a finger on him arcs away to the left he's past Colvin he pins his ears back he's away for the corner Fraser Thompson gets back it's a great cover and tackle there by Thompson Hoyk recycle the ball quickly though and uh, there's space on that left hand side if they can get there but uh, the referee says knock on there by Hoyk and uh, once again a great attack there by Hoyk Melrose back and a fantastic cover and tackle by Thompson it stays with uh, Melrose in a 12-0 advantage just shows you though Bruce you know the, 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 the beauty and the innocence of youth if you like Craig Russell there you know he had everything to go for there saw the gap created the gap himself saw the gap and went for the gap backed himself but it was just a great cover and tackle from Fraser Thompson that prevented the Hoyk score yeah well and again Hoyk just trying to push it a little bit too much there throwing uh, risky passes out and uh, it's given Melrose a chance once again in the shape of Andrew Skeen to break down that far side he cuts back inside looking for support he's just such a mazy runner there and he, he buys himself a little bit of time until the support arrives there and uh, not held in the tackle that was McGrath so he rolls he gets up just outside the Hoyt 22 and there's numbers here for uh, for Melrose Graham Dodds throws a great dummy John Dale just uh, claps his hands there he was the man inside he had two players outside and uh, Hoyt caught very very short in defence there any number of uh, Melrose players could have scored that one and uh, it's becoming a bit of a route it's Graham Dodd scores that one though Hoyk nil Melrose 17 yeah it's certainly becoming or what would appear to be a bit of a route with 8 minutes gone in this first half and Andrew Skeen with a very simple conversion from in front of the sticks outrageous dummy there from Graham Dodds you know he had players either side of him as Andrew Skeen slots that across to take the score to 19 points to nil for Melrose but uh, outrageous dummy from Graham Dodds there and uh, you know took it himself and went in under the sticks to the, much to the, the, the mass of cheer from the, the crowd behind the, the, the goal at this end. Yeah, big crowd back out as you would imagine to watch the final and uh, the sun thankfully has come back out here at the Hawk. We've got about a minute and a half till half time in this one. Andrew Skeen gets us restarted. A lovely high hanging left footed kick there. Not taken by, uh, now who was that for uh, for Hoyk over on the far side but uh, it's gone into touch nobody could get their hands on it it was uh, touched by Hoyk player though and Melrose not hanging about, quick throw in, the referee says no once again line was set, let's just come back and uh, and do it properly guys so Bruce Colvin to throw in now we're about uh, 15 metres out from the Hoyk line you feel that Hoyk cannot concede again here or uh, already game over and it goes over the back, everybody misses that one, it ends up in Hoyk hands Rory Hutton just looking for options just, uh, keeps going himself and offloads it eventually there to Rennick, he just uh, has a little dance and cuts back inside, away from Thompson 
little stumble there as he went into contact and Graeme Dodds has got a hold of him tries to win that ball back but I think Hoyker are going to just about retain this one offload off the ground there and Hutton just uh, puts a little kick across there and well if that had been taken once again it was, uh, Michael, Robertson. It was Michael Robertson if he could take taken that one he hasn't knocked it on though so play goes on Cottrell away goes here he's up against DL he knows he's got the legs on him but he's uh, dragged down well in a cover and tackle there by McGrath I think that was and Andrew out Skeen it comes it Andrew Skeen it is in fact it's Andrew Skeen that's, uh, that's round the side there trying to make a nuisance of himself the boot in there it's not, it's, uh, in fact it is McGrath it's McGrath there Andrew Skeen's out in the, uh, on the wing here waiting on a ball coming out to him but uh, the referee probably had any number of infringements to pick from there decided not to bother picking any of them he says it's half time it's Hoyk nil Melrose 19 yeah well it's uh, all at play for in the second half Hoyk I mean they're certainly not out of it I mean 19 points is not insurmountable as we've seen already in one of the ties earlier on this afternoon where uh, I think it was uh, indeed um, was it uh, the Hoyt Kelso game? Or, I think uh, where they were, or Selkirk game, where they were 19 points up, and then uh, teams came back at them to, to score points and to get themselves on level terms. So, you know, 19 points certainly not out of it at the moment, but uh, they're going to need to certainly shore up their defence. They're going to be mean, needing to make their tackles because that's the one thing that has certainly let them down in this first half is the number of missed tackles. So, needing to work on their tackles, and uh, you know, if if they can get the first score early doors in the second second half it might make a difference I think they do have to get the first score now let's go pitch side because uh, Stuart McCulloch is standing just to the side of the in goal area where, uh, where Melrose have been scoring all their points there was one I think it was Fraser Thompson's right in front of him what have you made of that first half Stuart? Well it was Melrose looking pretty strong now just looking at the Kings of the Sevens League if Melrose were to pick up the full 10 points here two tournaments to go there's going to be nine points in it Jed Forrest with 54 and Melrose and 45 so still a lot of play for Hoik still in it uh, 10 minutes to go in this final but uh, Melrose just looking the stronger the more clinical and Hoik looking a bit tired they are looking a little bit tired yeah but uh, 10 minutes to go here I'm sure they've uh, they've had a word they'll be talking about their defence as you said Kenny in that little huddle there and uh, they'll just have to lift themselves for these remaining 10 minutes Melrose for their part I think a try kills it now and they, they know that I think you're probably right but uh, certainly uh, I, I mean the big thing for Hoyk is they're, they're going to have to tighten up their defence because uh, their, their defence particularly when Melrose were attacking the, the, the Hoyk line their defence was shambolic there and they're going to need to, to sort that out and they're going to need to sort it out right at the start of this second half. Three tries for Melrose in the first half, Graeme Dodds, Andrew Skeen and Fraser Thompson, two conversions for Skeen and it is that man that gets us going again in the second half so ten minutes to go till we find out who is going to lift the Erlston Trophy for this year, for now it looks like Melrose Hoyk nil Melrose 19 half time score but it's Hoyk now playing back towards us and it's uh, them initially on attack in fact this is going to be Hoyk's score because the tackle missed there by Colvin and Hoyk are going to score with about 22 seconds played in this half and uh, as we said they needed to score first they have scored first the man that has scored it I'm just trying to see I think it's Craig Russell, Craig Russell, fact, it's Craig Russell that broke there he, had, uh, he only had one man to beat Melrose might be a little bit disappointed in their defence and he just cut back inside at pace and uh, Colvin couldn't drag him down Hoyk have done exactly what we said they should do the conversion from in front no mistake it's Hoyk 7 Melrose 19 yeah just looking at uh, previous winners here Melrose of course have won it for the last two years they won it in 2010 and 2011 so they're looking for a hat-trick of wins on the bounce here and uh, the last time that Hoyk won here uh, just having a, a wee look uh, appears to be about 1970 was the last time Hoyk won here at, uh, at Erlson so uh, you've got to go a long way back before you, you find a Hoyk win in the cup well they've got their danders up now because they've got Melrose penned back in their own 22 again although Cammy Rudkin says not releasing on the deck and Melrose a chance to clear their lines here but now 12 points in this one but don't rule out anything from happening here we've played about a minute and a half of the second half here in the Erlson Sevens final kick round 8 in the Kings of the Sevens series remember and it's uh, Melrose with the ball Fraser Thompson back to Skeen he's just standing on his own goal line decides to put boot to ball there and he's rushed into it doesn't make much ground just outside the 22 it's Cottrell dances one way then the other then he straightens looks for support he's hit hard in the tackle there by DL and Skeen though about 15 metres out now from the Melrose goal line all the, uh, the, the Hoyt players strung away to the right hand side so that can only go one way Hutton throws a ball out there and it's uh, brought back quickly towards this uh, right hand side the Melrose defence presses up hard John DL though beaten in the, uh, in the tackle dragged down there though by Skeen 
and it's a chance here for Robertson just on this uh, right hand touch line decides not to have a crack it helps though ball dropped went back but scooped up there by Fraser Thompson he cuts back past two or three Hoyt players now it's a race for the line he's up to halfway and he's been chased there by Johnson finds Skeen inside he cuts back away on the outside here and there's two or three Melrose players could score this I think Thompson's going to be the man he is in fact it was Thompson that started it it's Thompson that finishes it right behind the post Hoyt 7 Melrose 24 they made hard work of that Melrose to be honest uh, Fraser Thompson probably could have gone all the way himself but uh, indeed uh, he uh, started playing a bit of uh, ping pong there with the, the, the ball but uh, eventually gets it back and goes in for the score just to the right of the posts and uh, Melrose now you would think would probably just uh, ease on and, and uh, win this tournament here this afternoon you think so Andrew Skeen to, uh, to take the conversion that one does go over so he uh, extends the lead Hoyt 7 Melrose 26 one of the Hoyt players down and uh, it's just in front of Stuart McCulloch I can't see who it is Stuart can you tell us any more Keith Davis uh, that's uh, gone down there I think uh, when he knocked the ball on I think the tackle that had come in from Nick McGrath he's kind of slipped awkwardly and uh, it looks like his tournament could be over here so Graham Dodds nice touch from him coming over to make sure Keith Davis is ok but Hoyk I think we'll have to make the change Yeah they're going to have to make a change and uh, we've got a slight delay in the uh, in the action here as they, they work out how they're going to get him off the, the pitch I and mean, he's sitting up but he's obviously he's done something to uh, to a knee it would uh, it would look like the Hoyk physio is, uh, is on so we've played about three and a half minutes here and uh, just everybody getting a breather I'm not sure if this is in, in anybody's uh, favour certainly not Hoyk in the sense that they're, they're going to lose a player and a long way to come back uh, now for, for Hoyk with Fraser Thompson just scoring that one and uh, can you see Kenny we've still got time on the, on the clock we've got about seven minutes left but uh, a scoreline of Hoyk 26. 7 Melrose 26 yeah. can you see it happening? Uh, I, no I mean I think that Melrose have just you know they've, they've got a gear that they can just up and uh, you know, I think that obviously every precaution has been taken here with uh, Keith Davis, but uh, Neil McCombs come on obviously as a replacement. I see him coming on, and uh, I see another wee fellow there. I mentioned about Langham last week, and uh, he looked as if he was desperate to come on as well. I think it's uh, John Diel's young boy. Uh, he uh, he's uh, absolutely magic with the drop kicks, and uh, he was getting himself onto the park there as well. But uh, Keith Davis uh, coming off there now to a, a very sympathetic round of applause. It has to be said and uh, both physios have been on and uh, had a bit look uh, and he's uh, he's getting uh, shouldered uh, off the, the, the pitch there but uh, Neil McCombs come on to replace him very very important now we've probably uh, got a minute or so of injury time so we've probably got about 7 minutes left in this uh, second half of the final so Hoyk now vitally important that they get onto the score sheet as soon as they can yeah well they regather that uh, restart kicked off to them by Melrose and they take it the second Second time of asking and uh, way along that back line it goes over at the far far side no space there Fraser Thompson just scored a try and he's now standing in the way of Hoyk over on that far side in, uh, in defence there so Hoyk bring it back they lose ground they're back in their 22 but it's a little straighten there by, uh, by one of the Hoyk players offload there that's Johnson takes that one skips over the Melrose player puts boot to ball there and he just didn't quite get the direction that you could see what he was trying to do he had Robertson on his, uh, on his left he was just trying to keep that straight and, uh, and stop it just short probably of the, the Melrose line but it went into touch Melrose don't hang about they've thrown that one in and well that went into the hands of Neil McComb but he couldn't quite gather it under pressure from uh, Thompson there and if he had taken it he was over I think the ball originally Originally knocked on by uh, by him though, and uh, well, that was a dangerous a dangerous throw in there, Kenny. It has to be said because uh, Melrose have got this game won, but they, but they don't want to be throwing the ball to Hoyk in places well, like that. Bruce Bruce Colvin, you know, I mean, there was absolutely no need for it. It was their line out ball, and he, he took the quick one and he threw it in right in the middle of the field. And uh, Neil McComb coming up very very quickly, put Fraser Thompson under all sorts of pressure, and uh, John Diel now with a big hoof up the park, and uh, Neil McComb chasing back now. It's got to land in touch just uh, about the halfway line there on that far side of the field and uh, Melrose up very very quickly, Hoyk not getting the opportunity to get uh, a quick line out ball in here, we've probably got about five minutes to play here in this final. Hoyk 7, Melrose 26 so uh, Melrose can, can just shut the door now on Hoyk, it's Hoyk that have to force the game off the top of the line out there on halfway over on the far side by Robertson and back it comes to Cottrell again just looking for men to run off him that's uh, Rennick eventually gives it off to there and finds a little bit of space over on that far side but just once again as we've seen earlier in this tie and also in their tie against Watsonians, is just at, uh, at crucial stages the, the pass not quite going to the man and, and Robertson I guess you should always take a pass like that but it, it wasn't the best well I mean it was on his bootlaces that was the difficulty and uh, you know the, the ball probably is still you know the, the ground still will be wet so the ball was probably slippery and, and 
not the easiest of balls to pick up there. I mean, he was going to have to pick it up of his laces. So, you know, you kind of criticise him. It wasn't the best of passes that, that came out to him there on that wing. But uh, Melrose now back in their hands. Scott McCormick on for Nick McGrath for Melrose. Uh, it's Bruce Colvin just outside his own 22, about 20 metres in from this right-hand touchline. Takes the ball in and Fraser Thompson goes in to try and win it. The referee playing an advantage to Hoyk, though. Just an infringement on the floor, holding on on the deck, in fact. So, uh, Hoyk, once again, don't hang about as you'd expect the clock, the clock ticking on them. It's Robertson inside there to Johnson. Johnson going to score here for Hoyk. He's over. He's going to give them hope. It's Hoyk, 12, Melrose, 26. Yeah, well, well worked try there from... Uh from Hoyk and uh, Neil Rennick not taking uh, any time at all with the conversion just wanting to get back down to the, the halfway line, he misses the conversion attempt but uh, Gary Johnson very very quick up on that ball, great score from him and I think uh, you know Hoyk, they've got a little bit of hope now and uh, they're, uh, they're in sight of Melrose if you like but we probably only have about three minutes left in this final. Should have taken more time perhaps over the uh, the conversion but they didn't so it's uh, Hoyk 12, Melrose 26 and it's Melrose on the attack up towards halfway again just in the 15 metre channel on the right hand side of the pitch Melrose playing away from us away from the club room end but knocked on there by Melrose so it'll be a put into the scrum for Hoyk Hoyk have got uh, Keith well they did have Keith Davis on the uh, the pitch to start we've, uh, we've lost him Michael Robertson Gl- uh, Greg Cottrell Rory Hutton Gary Johnson Neil Rennick and Craig Russell Neil McComb coming on for uh, for Davis Melrose John Diel Joe Helps Graham Dodds, Bruce Colvin, Andrew Skeen, Nick McGrath and Fraser Thompson. The only change they've made, McGrath going off and McCormick coming on. And uh, it's a uh, line out here thrown in to, uh, to the line out by Melrose but stolen in the middle by Robertson for Hoyk and brings play back up into the Melrose half. Again, still in this same 15-metre channel on the right-hand side of the pitch. But away they go to the far side now. Hoyk still in the, uh, the centre line there. Back inside, no space over on that far side. This Melrose defence, it, it works itself well, though. It could be caught a little bit short-handed on this side now, just as I say that. This could be yet another. Hoyt tries that. Hutton once again it's coming Rory across Hutton, towards yep. this. Hutton, he's going to st- score in the Stuart McCulloch, uh, Stuart McCulloch corner. We'll just cross the Stuart McCulloch quickly quickly there. Right in front of you, Stuart. Hoyt back in it. A try, that try from uh, Rory Hutton certainly has given them hope. And uh, a big gap uh, opened up there, Bruce, uh, between, I think it was Scott McCormack coming on and Joe Helps. So uh, not too bad. So Hutton's try, bringing Hoyk back into it. Yes, well, we thought that Melrose were out of sight, Kenny, but uh, it's Hoyk 17, missed the conversion again. Melrose 26, can yeah, they get it? Yeah, I don't think there's enough time now. I think we're probably about a minute and a half now of this uh, second half. So I don't I don't think there's enough time for Hoyk. If they could get a quick score here, yeah, maybe, but... But uh, it's, uh, it's all down to what happens uh, probably in this next 30 seconds. If Hoyt can get a score now, it could be game on. Well, Melrose have coughed up the ball to them once again. So it was all Melrose in the first half. It's all Hoyt in the second half. Here's Johnson again, just looking for a runner inside him. He's dragged to the deck, but uh, manages to stay in field. Ball comes out there and, well hit hard in the tackle there by Melrose and they've uh, knocked the ball on there have Hoyt Fraser Thompson a try now would absolutely win it for uh, Melrose out it goes to Colvin away on that far side of the pitch he's going for it cuts back inside offloads there to Thompson can't quite find his man ball not knocked on though and across there well, it's Colvin in fact got back up on his feet and, uh, and won that one is it and uh, it was Colvin going to send this one out along the Melrose back line penalty awarded there to Hoyt though so quick tap and go on their 10 metre line out it comes to this side now both sets of players getting very very tired holes appearing in defence but again loose pass for the umpteenth time today by Hoyk this time Johnson trying to find Robertson and uh, that could have been the last chance saloon there for Hoyk it's still Hoyk 17 Melrose 26 yeah I think Gary Johnson coming up the centre of the field there I think he needed to cut across more towards Michael Robertson and Rory Hutton on this near side and uh, you know the pass it really needed to be into the basket as opposed to down below his knees and Michael Robertson thinking that uh, if he managed to put boot to ball that uh, you know it might just land lucky for Hoyk but uh, unfortunately went in a touch given the touch to Melrose and Melrose now on the attack yeah we've played a minute and a bit of uh, injury time but remember we uh, we probably spent a couple of minutes getting Keith Davis off the part although well, that one kicked off as the referee yeah, it says knock on there by uh, by Melrose I thought he'd, uh, he'd said full time no? so seven tries so far in the, uh, the final three for Hoyk Rory Hutton Gary Johnson and Craig Russell but four for Melrose two for Fraser Thompson and one apiece for Graham Dodds and Andrew Skeen but away come Hoyk again and 
and uh, on the 10 metre line, the Melrose 10 metre line again trying to find space over on that far side but they cut back inside, they decide to come to this near side, that Hutton I think again that's uh, it's coming across this way it's not in fact but it's uh, dragged down on the uh, on the 22 there, finds Robertson inside, then Johnson decides to try and go down the 5 metre channel, he didn't have much space to work with and I think probably should have tried to send it away the uh, the far way, he has been tackled into touching with that in fact, the referee Rudkin blows the final whistle and it is Melrose that will be crowned champions of the Edelson uh, 7 26 points to 17 they win this one here and uh, Kenny you've got to say Hoyk in the end made them work hard for it but deserving winners certainly Melrose deserving winners and that just really really juices up the Kings of the Sevens table because as it stands now Jed Forrest on 54 Melrose on 45 Watsonians on 36 and Hoyk on 35